on celebrity vibe we are bringing you one of the big comedians in ghana i present to you dkb <laughs> hello dkb yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, it's nice to have you on our show. To me, why? <laughs> what are you scared of nothing i'm not i'm not kelly so <laughs> punchlines <laughs> So please tell us, what's the meaning of DKB? Uh, DKB is my my official name. It's an acronym of my real name, which is Derek Kobnaboni. So that's just what it's about. Derek Kobnaboni, short form DKB. It's like, um, uh, you know, like uh, James Garner, JD. Uh -huh. And all of that, John Dumelo is JD, John Duma is JD. So among them, they don't know who is counterfeit. But me, I'm just JM John Mahama. You get what I'm saying? So what is Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufu? That's Nada. That's N A D A A. That's Nada. I ain't no Dano. Papa, so mom. You know why? Doesn't he sleep? He doesn't. Yeah, the one thing. What the hell are you talking about? There are videos there. <laughs> one what that no problem. So it's so just uh, an acronym of my name. Yeah. I remember when I was in JHS, I heard said DKB. No, it stands for Dokuno Kraba. Dokuno what? Kraba. Dokuno Kraba. Who eats Dokuno Kraba? Are you I, the one? I was, I was wondering. Too. How do you mingle with people who eat Dokuno Kraba? I'm so disaster. <laughs> So it's not you. I'm, I'm ashamed of you. Dokunu in Kraba. Hey, so what do you eat your love in? <laughs> That's been Coletta. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's it's uh, Amanda GC of GH1. She is the one who, she, you know, was just trying to be silly. And that was what actually went farther than even my real name, Dokunu Ba. That's what she, she, she called me, yeah, Dokunu Ba. I think it has helped. It hasn't, I don't like it. It hasn't helped anything. It it pushed, it pushed them. It doesn't. I don't want that push. How am I Dokuno? Wait. <laughs> Even if my head is Dokuno, do you know how much you have to buy it? Head, you ask me. Uh, head uh, must. Uh, of which institution? Of uh, Patapabu's Wumpim International Atajua Secondary School. <laughs> okay, so um, we would like for you to tell us more about yourself, where you grew up. Where I grew up, I grew up in Kolegono, um, Kolegono Tuesday Market. It's like, they call it Mapuvi Tuesday Market. Actually, where I grew up was in the middle. So uh, the name, the real name of where I, where exactly I was, is called Otate, which means we are sitting in the middle. Because to our left was Mapuvi, to our right was Kolegono. And way back then. Well, everybody was everybody's friend, you know. Everybody's the grown-ups were your uncles and fathers and mothers and all of that. And I remember TikTok blew up. He was in the same area. TikTok blew up with uh, Philomena, and then yeah, and then later Shatawale also blew up with uh, Bandana from Ghana. Yeah, but his father was my father's friend and my mother's friend as well. And every Saturday he used to come and eat banku, prepared by my mom. Banku, shitolo, dide, sardine, ketchup. That food is spiritual, you know. <laughs> so that's how come we got the connection. So I didn't even, I didn't even know that Mr. Ama was Shatawale's father. So my mom told me that, you know, uh, thank you, thank you. Please, I need ice. Okay, okay so... Um if you want to know, we are inside Cabo Coso at um, Achimota Retail Center. So I think they have the best beggar in Accra, oh, the whole Ghana. So you can just pass by anytime you find yourself around Achimota Retail Center. Say, so, Koyi. Ah, they are my people, though. Um, if I catch a man for girls, this is where I come. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about where you lived, you never lived in Suhum. So was my vacation location. Every grandma was there, still there. So every vacation, 
I come to some home to spend it. So it was my vacation location from primary. So I finished university. Okay, so that was where you caught a crapping polo. I never knew a crapping polo back then. Oh, but she said, Yeah, in our minds. A crapping polo is way younger than I am. So, but I got, I knew of some girls be, who were running the town. Pa. So somebody was telling me that, ah, one of them is a crapping polo. I'm like, oh, but weren't close like that. But that, mama and that, that thing, we're just playing. We're just playing. But like I said, it's silly. It caught on well. People liked it. Because people want to do mama and that. <laughs> okay, so away from that, how was Big Brother Africa? Big Brother Africa is a, it's a show that brings out your true colors. A lot of people talk a lot of trash. Oh, this if I go, I will win. If I go, I will chop all the girls. <laughs> you are mad. You <laughs> think the girls are lying, they're waiting to be chopped. It's a, it's a show where you have to use the human beings as your phone. You have to use the human beings as your laptop. You have to entertain yourself with the human beings. And now, if there's an issue and they are not happy with you, how do you use them for your entertainment? So, there's a whole lot. And when you're locked up in a place, your true colors show up. If you are quick tempered, it will show up. If you are tolerant, it will show up. If you have low self esteem, it will show up. If you have high self esteem, it will show up. I had self esteem. I didn't care. I had high self esteem. I didn't care about anybody. And I was blasting everybody because, see, people come with game plan. Let me befriend this person. Let me despise this person. And then sometimes the friend turns back on them and then it, the, the plan backfires. I had no plan. And I realized it was actually the best plan. So have no plan. So today, if you mess with me, I blast you. Tomorrow we could be cool. We're moving. So nobody could tell what my plan was. I was just in there causing confusion. Now to the, the fact that the reason why I'm saying that is because you will never know yourself till you enter Big Brother House. Trust me. You you'll be shocked. See, my Big Brother issue that happened. I tell you what. People say I'm quick tempered and all of that. That, that was my most tolerant form then. Yeah. People who knew me were like, this guy, like, he was slapped a girl two weeks ago. Yes. It didn't happen. So, after two weeks, where I couldn't take anymore. So, at first, I thought, me, I'm no nonsense. Should you know me? I'll give it to you, bang, bang, bang. I didn't know I could tolerate even more nonsense. Now, somebody thinks, oh, I could tolerate more nonsense. You go there, and then probably you can't tolerate nonsense. And then you start throwing things at people, chasing people with knives and all of that. So, it's a crazy show. You, you, it shows your true self. It's dangerous. But do you think people do that because they know um, maybe a camera see almost so people are watching? Some people. Because after the first week, the first week, you'll be shying away from the camera. You don't want the camera to see you and all of that. By second week, you'll be chasing the camera. Because if the camera is not making that turn, turning some to be on you, which means you're not doing anything exciting. And if you're not doing anything exciting, the votes will not come for you. You will not be on people's minds. So, after the second week, you'll be chasing the camera. You'll be wanting to do things that will draw the attention to you. So maybe that's how come some of them bring up unnecessary drama. Yeah, but me, anybody who brought unnecessary drama, I also give unnecessary reaction. Because, because my main motive was in the house was nobody feeds me here. I'm not here with my mom. I'm here with my age mate, so we are equal. So if you do, I'll do you. Simple like that. And it was exciting for me because every time, apparently every time I was on, on, on the screen, people were watching me every time because is it I'm saying something or I'm blasting something, I'm gossiping about someone. Or any, I, was, I was a busy character in the house, basically. Yeah. So let's come back to Ghana. How is life as a comedian? Uh -oh. Life as a comedian, 
It's tricky. Tricky in the sense that you have to watch how you draw the line between seriousness and comical. Else, anything you say, people will take it as a joke. And that's where your downfall comes. Because you are popular, you're famous. One day your opinion will be sorted. And then you give out your opinion and they're laughing. How would you feel? This brings us to this question. Do people ever take you seriously? Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about serious issues, they know that I'm talking about serious issues. Like, DJs playing 100% Ghana music during the year of return, Christmas. People knew I was not playing around. I was serious about it. It's up to you and how you communicate. See, if you pick a serious topic, you don't end it playfully. You end it seriously. I make sure that whatever I'm saying, when I start serious, I end serious. So when people watch it, and it ends in a serious note. Then they go like, okay, he's been serious here. And then the next moment we're having fun because a comedian is not a toy. As a human being who is descending, has dignity, and also has opinion on issues. So sometimes, unfortunately, when people feel like, oh, say he's a comedian. Me, I don't tolerate, like, One bank where I save the commercial branch. The signage to the bank branch, terrible signage. Where I supposed to turn right, the signage tells you left. Room them, room them, room, and I found somebody to help me get the location without using the signage. I go there telling them of how I've been roaming about and their signage is terrible. They were laughing. It will be funny or anything, they take do joke. I said, no, I know they take do joke, but it will be serious thing. You guys are not serious, what is that? Come on, Sunday, you can't make your, your Sunday serious. Where it's supposed to be right is you, you turn left and all of that. What, what kind of nonsense is that? You're telling me that, me that will be funny. And then they write, oh, okay. This guy is serious. So the manager came, oh, what, what is the problem? I said, your Sunday is terrible. Turn right, then it shows left. How did I know? When I kept following your signage, it kept turning me around. So somebody showed me the direction to this place. And when I was coming, following your signage, I realized, okay, where the guy told me to turn, your, your signage was telling me to turn opposite. Oh, I think we didn't fix it, well then we'll pay attention to that. Yeah, because what if, in all the frustration as I came, and then I'm telling them about the fact that your signage is terrible, and then they laugh, and I also laugh along. Because I want to recognize as a comedian, you are mad. Let them know you are serious. Because maybe my seriousness and the changing of the signage will save another customer. So people need to know that you are a comedian, but you are not a fool. And if you don't take care, they'll take you for a fool. It's a very thin line. And from scratch, you need to let them understand. That's why sometimes, I mean, that's why the fact that. It was an agenda in the industry to destroy Ghana comedy and uplift Nigeria comedy. Another reason why, another challenge I had was people will sometimes say, eh, I think it was not funny because when it's a serious moment, I let you know it's serious. And they can't get a chance to play with that moment. Oh, you two, oh, with the talks. I said, no, my eye read. What do you mean by, oh, no. What, how do you joke with such a thing? So, because, I, I criticize them for wanting to take that serious moment as a joke. Oh, but it's not funny. Do you get know what I'm saying? It's, it's a challenge. But as time goes on, they'll get to realize, okay, this guy will comedian, but he gets sense. He be comedian, but he talks real life issues. I mean, Honorable Fritz for was a comedian, but he became an MP. In, uh, is it? Romania, there's a... It's Romania. Yeah. Hey, Romania also. Their president is a comedian. So you say the whole country is a joke? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay.
Okay, when you were talking, you said something like they wanted to bring down Ghana comedy and then uplift Nigeria. What do you think Nigerians are doing that is different? Nobody is doing anything different, nothing. So why does it look like Ghana comedy is dying? There was, no, no, it's not dying. Right now, it's very, very alive. There was, there was a conceited effort. There was a plan to totally destroy Ghana comedy. They succeeded at a point, and I came and I changed the narrative. And I haven't been liked since then. Let me show you. It's a bunch of people who import Nigerian comedians. Now, when they bring these comedians, people are ready to pay 200 cities, 300 cities, 400, 500 Ghana to watch them because they succeeded. This was 2009 to 2014, five years. They succeeded in using the media to destroy Ghana comedy. So, Ghana comedy was nowhere to be found, and they were bringing the Nigerian comedians and making all the big money. So 2014, when I broke the jinx, I made a vow to myself to use my fame to uplift Ghana comedy, help everybody to come up. And today we have the Lexis, the Waris, MJ, Obi, all of them. Because I, 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 I didn't want to be selfish. And now, those who kept importing Nigerian comedy, now are under pressure to use Ghana comedians. So the money they were making from Nigerian comedy, they are, not make, they are not making it anymore. So you think they will like me? No. That's why if you watch through all the comedians, I'm the one who's always under attack. Because I'm the one who changed the narrative for Ghana to also benefit some of the money. Yeah, and these people, let me show you. When they bring the Nigerian comedians, they go and get sponsorship money for hotel, food, transport, hotel, food, transport, uh, flight. These four items, they've taken money from sponsors to go and pay for it. When they turn around, they go and get free um, flight from the airline because they'll promote the airline. So the airline gives them the flight for free, so they've saved the flight money. Hotel, they'll go to the hotel and tell them, we'll promote you as part of our show for free, give us rooms. The hotel gives them room. They save the hotel money. Food, they go to a restaurant, partner us, we'll give you the blah, blah, blah. They save the food money. Then transport. They go to a car renting agency. We want to rent your car, blah, blah, blah. Oh, OK, promote us, yes. So they save money from four sources. Now, Ghana comedy has developed. If you need a, a Ghana comedian, you don't need a flight. So you can't take flight money from the sponsor. You don't need a hotel, we stay in Ghana. So you can't make money from the hotel. You don't need a restaurant. We are here, we eat here. You don't need transport, we transport ourselves. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave your comments below because we value your feedbacks. And also, please subscribe to the channel for more. It's Campus Vibe GH.